Okay, so I left you hanging with this idea that we have to have a hybridization to explain fully valence bond theory. Kind of back up just a little bit. In order for a bond to form, you have to have atomic orbitals with one, only one electron in it. Okay, so we were thinking about CH4 and trying to explain what happens with CH4 that would explain how we've got a tetrahedron. We had looked at hydrogen and we know that hydrogen has one electron in the 1s orbital. Okay, so we could say it's 1s with one electron. And then we did carbon and we realized that carbon isn't. Um, well, if we do electron configuration and then draw the orbital diagram of the valence shell, it looks like this. So there's two electrons there, and then you have the 2p with two more electrons. And we said we, you got to promote up, and if that were the story, what would a bond look like? Well, we'd have our 3p orbitals. There'd be one this direction. There would be one this direction, and there would be one coming in and out of the plane of that. This one would be overlapping with the 1s of hydrogen. This one would be overlapping with the 1s of hydrogen. The one coming in and out of the board, and I'm going to draw that one coming in and out of the board in pink just to try to, try to give it some three dimensions. Coming in and out of the board, okay. It is overlapping with a 1s. Okay, so I have a 1s overlapping. So far we've got 90 degree angles, plus there is an s orbital inside of this whole mess, and I'm just going to make it really look messy by trying to draw that 1s orbital inside of here. It's overlapping with a 1s, I mean this is the 2s. This is the 2s overlapping with this 1s, Come on, it really looks crazy now. This would give me two different types of bonds. There's a s and an s overlap. Okay, there's a P and an S overlap, and we'd see 90 degree bond angles, and that is not what happens with methane. There's got to be more sto to the story. So it's not just a 1S overlapping with a 2S, and a 1S, 1S overlapping with a 2P. There's got to be more to the story. And that's where we get into the lesson on what's called hybridization. Okay? What hybridization is, is a mathematical mixing of these atomic orbitals to make new atomic orbitals that we've never talked about before. They no longer are an S and a P orbital. They are called hybrids because they're a mixture of these orbitals. So think about a hybrid car, you know, it's got gasoline and electric and they're working together. A hybrid orbital has S's and P's. They're getting mixed together to form something new. All right? So orbitals form when two or more non-equivalent. These are not equivalent, okay? Two or more non-equivalent atomic orbitals on the same atom, notice all of these are on the carbon, on the same atom, are combined. Now this is a mathematical combination that's happening and we cannot look at the mathematics of it. You just have to trust me a little bit on that. All right. In the case of the methane, we're going to take this S here and we're going to mix it with those three P's there. Now there are three, two P's, there are three P orbitals. We're going to mix those together and those are going to form our new atomic orbitals. They're still atomic orbitals, but they're not called S's and P's, and they have new shapes and new directions. So here is the mixing. Notice on the left, we have a blue, represented in blue, is an S orbital, and then we have our three P orbitals. One's along the X axis, one's along the Y axis, and one is along the Z axis. Now each one of those orbitals are actually over top of each other with the same, you know, central um, point where the nucleus is, and we can't really see them well in this diagram, but all of them are over top of each other there. And we know that they each could have, would have one electron in them in the case of the promoting up for our carbon. They each have a mathematical equation that represents them. And if you take those orbitals and you combine their mathematical expressions, that's what hybridization is all about. So the mixing of these orbitals, I want you to think of it like the mixing of paint. Notice how I've got blue and red making purple here. So there's your, your mixing there. So the mixing of orbitals is like the mixing of paint. If I were to take one cup of blue paint and three cups of red paint, I would get purple paint, and how many cups of purple paint would I have, okay? If you take the one cup of the blue and the three cups of red, okay, 
you still have four cups. So what we will have is I put four orbitals in and mix them. I am going to get four orbitals out. And these four orbitals are represented here along this, find my pen here. So these are the one, two, three, four orbitals. Now if you take those four orbitals and you put them over top of each other with the same nucleus. Here's the nucleus, the nucleus, and you overlap them in the same space, then you end up getting that tetrahedron shape. They happen to be on the legs of a tetrahedron when you mix them together. And that accounts for the, the shape that we know that methane will have. Okay, so an S orbital, three P orbitals mixed together to form four identical new orbitals. These four new orbitals are named according to the orbitals that went in to make them. So what went in? We had an S and when we had three P's. So we mix this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy. Those three plus that one, those four went in. And notice with S and three P's, we called it an SP3. That's where it gets its name. That superscript three is now telling me how many P's went into the mix. It's not telling me how many electrons are in there. Okay, so don't confuse it with that. It is a name of an orbital. Okay, so when I draw them, they end up being along the same axis or the same legs of a tetrahedron that we're used to. Okay. Now, I'm going to post a link to an animation that you can, you can either stop here and go watch or I would recommend finishing this video and then go to that link. I'm not going to force you to make it, but I know that it was very helpful for me to see this idea of mixing. They will actually take these and show you what they look like. This is what they look like, but they show you a prettier picture than this, okay? They show you them individually. Then they will take them and mix them and show you that you get these four new equivalent orbitals. And then they will show you what they look like in the three-dimensional world. And they'll do it for every possible mixing. So what are the possible mixings I can have? I can mix an S with one P, okay? That's two orbitals go in, two come out. I can mix an S with two Ps. One orbital goes in of this, two of these, three are going in, three will come out. Or I can have all this. Or they also show it mixing with some D orbitals as well. There is some controversy right now in the uh, general chemistry world as to whether or not that's a reality, enough of a reality to uh, actually bother you with. I have the link there if you wanted to try to put in all those characters, but I will post that link later. And there's our little tetrahedron 3SP, I mean 4SP3 hybrids drawn on the same Cartesian plane. And that bond angle is mathematically comes out to 109.5 like we know a tetrahedron is. All right, so here it is showing that same concept, just once again reinforcing it. We had the two S's, we had the electrons in the 2S here. At the bottom, I'll find my pen. All right, we have the two electrons here. We have the two electrons here. That comes from the electron configuration of carbon being 2s2, 2p1. We do a promotion up. We do a mixing of all of those orbitals, and that gives us four equivalent in energy. What is the word for that? Do you remember? Four orbitals that have exactly the same energy. They all look the same. They're just pointing in different directions. All right, and the word for that is degenerate. So, we can determine the mixing of any orbitals doing a similar process. We can take the orbital, we can write an electron configuration, okay, we can do that. Then we can, from that electron configuration, we can promote to spread out, promote to spread out those electrons. We can then mix them together to get the hybridization, and that's what this is saying, promoting, mixing, okay? And your book goes through this. Now, I am not certain about those pages that are mentioned there. I'm not 
perfectly certain. But if it's different than that, I'll make sure I post a comment about that. But it actually goes through and says, okay, for this molecule, we'll start with this electron configuration, we'll promote these electrons up, we'll take these guys and we'll mix them, and now we've got these hybrid orbitals, and now these hybrid orbitals can form bonds. It goes through all that. But you don't have to really go through it. I wanted to do it in detail for carbon so you understood the reason for the hybridization, the reason for considering hybrid orbitals rather than plain old atomic orbitals. But there is a bottom line. This is the bottom line statement with my rendition, Kim's paraphrase right there. If you go through and you figure out how many legs it has, and you know the geometry from that. Now this would be the electron geometry where you're considering lone pairs as well as legs. Those are the five geometries that we know. That would give you these hybrid orbitals. So if the molecule is linear, we have two sp's. And they are pointing in opposite directions of each other. So there would be an sp going in this direction, and there would be an sp going in this direction, which makes it look like a p orbital, but that's not a p orbital, that's two sp orbitals. If it's a trigonal plane, then what you have is three orbitals, that's an S and two P's that are getting mixed, and that would give you a shape of SP2, 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 each one of these, SP2, are an SP2 hybrid that are on the legs of a trigonal plane. Then we have our tetrahedron, which we went through in detail, and then we have our trigonal bipyramid and our octahedron, and this argument of the d orbitals being coming into play is questionable, but certainly if I have an s, three p's, and a d, that's five orbitals going in, five orbitals going out, taking on the shape of a trigonal bipyramid. I ran out of p's, so I had to go to d next. So, I'm not showing you the animations with this video, but that's what we have. So that is the hybridization that we are going to see. So we're looking at the beautiful story with a picture. And if a question that we're reading says, describe the bonding of methane using valence bond theory, then this is what you have to do. You first do a Lewis structure, CH4, and you get how many legs it has, okay? So let's do a Lewis structure of CH4. C, H, 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 okay? Four legs, I know it's tetrahedron. Four legs, I know it's sp3 hybridization. sp3, there's four orbitals. I would draw those four orbitals on the legs of a tetrahedron, okay? So I've got them off at 109.5 degrees. Each one of these is an sp3 hybrid orbital. What is a hybrid orbital? It's an atomic orbital. It's just a new atomic orbital that we've never seen before. Now it's drawn very nicely in purple on your screen. Each one of those sp3s, and now I'll draw on the screen here, sp3, 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 sp3. These are still atomic orbitals on hydrogen. On, I'm sorry, on carbon. Each one of those is. And we describe the bond as what's overlapping. The overlapping is occurring between the sp3 of the carbon atom and the 1s orbital of the hydrogen atom. And I have just described that bond using valence bond theory. So each bond is formed by the overlap. That's always a statement of valence bond theory, and then you describe what is overlapping. It's the 1s orbital of hydrogen with the sp3 of carbon, and this is happening times four. It's happening for each one of the bonds. So let's do another example here. We're gonna do an example with um, ammonia, NH3. And you're going to answer questions um, as we go through this. So you're going to stop and first answer this one. How many legs does nitrogen have? Now remember what my leg count is. My leg count is lone pairs plus bonded atoms. So stop, draw a Lewis structure, and determine how many legs this has. Well, hopefully you got the right answer and you got, whoops, back up the bus because that's our next question. You got the answer of four. Now, how would you get an answer of four? You draw a good Lewis structure. The Lewis structure looks like this, okay? 
it has a lone pair, and three bonded atoms. Now once you have done that, then you can go back to my little table with Kim's paraphrase. Once you know how many legs, you can determine the hybridization. So now you can answer this question. Okay, so if you have four legs, it is sp3. So the answer is sp3 in this case. Now once you've determined that, then you can describe the bonding of this guy using valence bond theory. We know that the bond between nitrogen and hydrogen, and let's go ahead and I'll draw a Lewis structure here, we have to account for every bond and we have to account for the lone pair. The bond is formed by the overlap of atomic orbitals. Well, which atomic orbitals are they? Well, it's the 1s orbital of hydrogen because it had one electron in it with the sp3, and I know it's sp3 because I had four legs and four legs is sp3 hybridization. So the sp3 of the nitrogen is overlapping with the 1s of hydrogen it's now sharing those two electrons and that accounts for that bond. Well that didn't just happen once, that happens three times. There is the 1s of hydrogen overlapping with the sp3 of nitrogen. There is the 1s of hydrogen overlapping with the sp3 of hydrogen. So that accounts for those three bonds. Now we can account for the lone pair. There are four sp3s, so the fourth sp3 is simply housing that lone pair. So we could describe the bonding of this molecule as follows. One of the sp3 orbitals is housing the lone pair. Okay, it has a lone pair in it. The other three are forming a bond by, this is a key to valence bond theory. It is an overlap of atomic orbitals. What atomic orbitals? The sp3 is an atomic orbital on the nitrogen with the 1s orbital of hydrogen. And I have just successfully described the bonding of this molecule using valence bond theory. So let me back up to that picture as I kind of bring it all together. Valence bond theory is about describing a bond by saying what atomic orbital on this atom is overlapping with what atomic orbital on this atom. If it's a diatomic molecule, we don't have to do any of this hybridization. We just find the orbital that only has one electron in this atom, find an orbital that only has one electron in it in this atom, and allow them to overlap. But when we go beyond a diatomic molecule, we have got to consider hybridization. Hybridization only occurs on the central atom, not the terminal atoms. So we have to think about, number one, what's mixing? We don't actually have to go through all of this. We can start with the geometry or the Lewis structure. See how many legs it has. Whether this is a double bond or a single bond, it doesn't matter. Whether it's an atom or a lone pair, it doesn't matter. We count up how many legs it has, and from that, we will be able to determine the hybridization on the central atom. Those are the atomic orbitals on that central atom that can get involved in overlapping. Because once again, valence bond theory is figuring out what is the atomic orbital on this atom that can overlap with what atomic orbital on this atom to form a bond.